In the quiz from the previous section, you should have found something kind of weird when r equals 4. The orbits don't settle into a periodic cycle. They do something different. They continue to behave irregularly, and in fact, there's no period at all. As you've probably guessed, this is chaos. We've seen our first example of a chaotic dynamical system. So we have lots to talk about in the next several lectures. I'll be able to define what chaos is and also what sensitive dependence on initial conditions is, also known as the butterfly effect. We'll start by looking more closely at the orbits of the logistic equation when r equals 4. So let's look at orbits for the logistic equation when r equals 4.0. So I'll change this to 4.0 and let's make the time series plot. And here's what we see. You can see that the orbit bounces around, it gets very close to the apocalypse or annihilation population here, crashes, then grows, and then jumps around again, and it looks like another crash was happening here. But the key thing to note is that we're not seeing any periodic behavior. There are hints of it, there's some regularities. The, this up pattern repeats, this crash and grow pattern repeats a little bit but it never repeats exactly. Let's look at this for a larger um, number of iterates. Here we see it again. Continues to jump around. It looks like it almost gets stuck here around 0.75, but not exactly. Then again, we see these uh, big falls when it gets close to the apocalypse value. And we can look down in this table of numbers, and perhaps you can look for numbers, maybe when you did the quiz, you look for numbers that repeat, but um, you'll keep seeing new numbers. This keeps cycling around. Let's do one more thing. Let's try plotting a thousand iterates. This will look like one big purple blob. There it is. And I guess the main thing, again, to note is that we're not seeing the, any sort of periodic or regular behavior emerge. If, say, we went back to 3.2 or 3.1, that was an example we studied, that was a periodic value, we look at the time series plot there, we can see some regularity. It's a little hard to see, but it's bouncing back and forth between these two values. Whereas if I go to 4, it keeps bouncing around. I think this will go up to 10,000, will it? Yep. Takes a second to think. It's calculating, it's plotting. It's still thinking, it's still thinking. I'm really stressing my computer out by doing this. I, I'm, I feel bad. Oh, it's getting stressed again. Okay, there it is. That was a long time to wait for a big purple rectangle. So this is 10,000 iterates of the logistic equation. It keeps on bouncing around. Let's, let me jump all the way down to the bottom of the screen. There it is. The numbers still haven't hit any sort of cycle. We keep seeing new numbers all the time. So we say that this behavior, rather than being periodic, is aperiodic. The orbit does not repeat. So let's summarize the behavior of the logistic equation for r equals 4.0, like we did for other r values. The difference is that for this r value, we find that the orbit is aperiodic. It does not possess a period. The orbit does not repeat. It keeps cycling around irregularly. So we have a puzzle. How can we represent that on a final state diagram? So here's the unit interval. The population is always between 0 and 1. Remember, 1 is the apocalypse or annihilation uh, population, and 0 is 0. So 
uh, what's, what are the final states for this? Well, if we iterated, say, for 10,000 times, and then watched it for another 10,000, we would continue to see the population, which you can think of as a dot on this line, bouncing around. So another way to think of this is iterate for 10,000, and then for the next 10,000, open up a camera um, for a long exposure photograph as the dot bounces around, and we would see that the dots would fill up this line, just like in the previous image, those purple, uh, the purple dots filled up the rectangle. So it would look something like this. So there would be so many dots here that they would fill out the entire line. So it would look like a solid line of these dots. So the final states isn't just two or four dots because it's periodic. The final states would be this entire line because it's aperiodic and the orbit wanders from very close to zero to almost one. So there's one more thing I should mention before I'm overcome by fumes from this Sharpie. I should put the lid back on. And that is a little bit about this claim of mine that the orbit is aperiodic. So this is a result from mathematics that is proven uh, exactly and rigorously for the logistic equation with r equals 4.0. Doing so is beyond the scope of this course. It requires a good bit of mathematics. It's a standard part of most um, junior level courses on chaos or dynamical systems. So I'm sorry I can't do this proof here, but it's important to mention so that one understands that this claim is rigorously established. It's not just a computer result or an experimental result. It's something that one can prove or deduce from first principles. So this orbit really is aperiodic. There's an infinite number of numbers between 0 and 1, an uncountably infinite number in fact, and if you iterate this forever, you'll never see the same number twice. You'll keep seeing new numbers as the orbit moves around. I think aperiodic behavior in the logistic equation is a somewhat surprising and interesting result. We make the orbits by iterating a function. We're doing the same thing over and over again. It's a very repetitious process. But the result is not repetitious at all. It's an orbit that's aperiodic. It never repeats. So it's interesting to me that this very orderly, unchanging process produces behavior that looks so irregular. Moreover, we'll see that the orbits produced by the logistic equation are in a sense unpredictable they have the butterfly effect or sensitive dependence on initial conditions. And in a sense, we can even say that the orbits produced by this simple deterministic function are randomness. So let's begin digging into these ideas by looking at how two different orbits for the logistic equation behave. We'll do that in the next lecture.